Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're talking about Windows 10 for PCs, build 14.328. Now there is a lot new in this build, so I am just going to try to get through it as fast as I can. I'm not going to, you know, chit chat you and tell you about the build. First up, we have the Windows Inc. workspace. Now this, um, you click this icon over here. If it's not there, and it shouldn't be unless you have a pen paired with your PC, like a Surface Pro 3 or 4. Um, this is a Surface Pro, the original, and that icon should have been there by default. If it's not there, right click on the taskbar, make sure this is checked. All right, so this is what we can do. We can open up Sticky Notes, which is a universal app now, which is okay, I guess, because the, the notes don't actually stay sticky. Um, we have Sketchpad, which gives us our digital ruler, all right, and um, you can draw and stuff like that. We also have Screen Sketch, which allows us to take a screenshot and right on the screen. All right. Also, we have an all new start menu. Um, so obviously we now have the all apps view by default, which can be very useful. We, we have the most used at the top still. All right. Um, we have in tablet mode, we have all new also. So um, as you can see, by the way, the notification centers is in the bottom right or the icon for it. That's um, in a new place, tablet mode. Now we get, this is our all apps list, is now the full screen like that. Honestly, I think it's a good improvement. I know a lot of people weren't happy about it at first. I like it. So there's a lot of um, notification center changes, or action center changes, I should say. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for, for calling it that. Um, and also, you'll see down here that the mail icon that's pinned down here has six new emails, because now it's showing me... Um, how many notifications I have from apps down there. So we can see that tiles are not yet chaseable. Uh, if I click on this, it's not going to take me direct, directly to the story. So that that's we do have more features coming, although I really have to say that this is really uh, um, a massive change, and I can't imagine them putting that many more features in because they, they do, they, they need to put some work into this because it's it's, it, it is fairly unstable. All right, so we also have Cortana on the lock screen. And to get that, we need to go into Cortana settings and we need to turn it on because otherwise you're not going to see it. Let me use uh, Cortana, even when my device is locked, on and you're good to go. So we can see that um, obviously there are some bugs in this build as Cortana is now up around here and not down here anymore. God knows why we're not even on the lock screen. All right, I did put the, the thing to sleep and then wake it up again. Obviously, it's not working out well. I will say one bug that they fixed. If you notice, I've been complaining about this the last, like, five builds or maybe even more. I haven't been able to shut off my PC with any of these builds. Now I actually can. Um, the thing actually does shut off if I try, which is really nice. Um, so more ways to, to create Cortana. Look, Cortana's back. Um, so we could uh, make a picture reminder, which is something that we, we were able to do on the latest... Um, couple uh, mobile builds that was a feature but there was no PC build because there was bugs so they had the they had to delay the PC build a couple times um, so we could we could tell it to set a reminder remind me in two minutes to buy a Red Bull sure thing I can remind you to buy a Red Bull at so now you're gonna click the library here or you could take a picture. I gotta say, it's really tough to do this. Um, it, it just wants you to, it, it, it wants to respond to you and then it just, it, 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 it it's not in the best shape right now. Um, hopefully it gets better, I'm sure it will. Um, so cross, uh, Cortana cross device features, which is the whole point of Cortana, by the way. With the goal of keeping you in perfect sync across all devices where you use Cortana, we introduced new, new cross device features for Cortana with the last PC build. Uh, but these features were not working correctly with build 14.295 on mobile. With today's new mobile build, these new features should be working correctly. All right, so um, we we could ask Cortana, where's my phone? She may or may not find my phone. It just didn't work last time. Apparently, it's because it was 14.295 at the time. But may, maybe maybe she will this time. Uh, making Cortana easier to easier to use. Starting the, with this build, you won't need to sign in to use Cortana or any kind of setup at all, uh, which is really cool. Um, if they want to make it easier to use for everybody, oh look, there's my phone. 
Um, but they found the HTC 10, which is an Android phone, obviously. Um, but that's, that's interesting. It didn't find any of my windows phones. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, I said to ring it. The phone is not ringing. So who knows? Um, now, um, what do we got? We got, um, uh, the, oh, there's a windows phone. I bet we could ring that. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know how many phones it's going to ring. I have a lot of Windows phones. All right, so, um, oh, there we go. Now the HTC is ring. Uh, oh, that's the Cortana reminder. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, we have picture reminders, which is part of this whole new thing. Um, and it's we also see that we have notifications in the Action Center here. And the pictures show up, in, and Cortana notifications show up. We have hero images. We have Cortana notifications. That's um that's all new stuff. All right, so um deeper file search including OneDrive results. Okay, so we can search for search for FTLOT, and if we if we click on the folders icon here, um these are all my OneDrive folders that are not synced to my PC. However, if I if I click on one, it's going to open the web interface, which is what I would rather avoid to begin with. Honestly, what I want is placeholders. Anybody that follows me knows that I want placeholders. And that's the only way that I'll really stick with Windows 10 full time. Um, so we have a new File Explorer icon, speaking of the File Explorer. Um, so that's exciting. New icons, I guess, are always exciting. So um, visual changes to the Action Center, Cortana um, in the Action Center, we went over all that. Uh, I'm just going through the release notes. So updates to the taskbar. Taskbar clock now integrates with your calendar. All right. So now if you have a calendar linked or there's my buy a bread bowl, which if you if you if you saw the Windows 10 mobile video where I went over that feature, um, you know that that um, it thought it said bread bowl before, too. Um, and I had to try that feature a few times to actually get it to work. It thought I said buy a rental before so so you know thanks Cortana <laughs> um, taskbar clock on all monitors um, so if you have a multi monitor setup this clock will show up on all your monitors now for the first time since the invention of the taskbar um, taskbar badging for UWP apps we went over that also that's where we have um, the number of notifications down here um, taskbar, taskbar settings now in um, settings app all right so how to get used to this new start menu, right? Um, so we can go to taskbar. Basically, it's that it's been moved to under system. Um, as an added bonus, these settings are now discoverable by searching with Cortana. Uh, manage multiple playback devices with the taskbar. Uh, the volume flyout has been updated to allow you to switch. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so um, <laughs> um, updates to the settings app. Icons for individual settings pages. Um, as you can see, we have these icons here um, along the left. It was just plain text before. It's again, this is something that we had in the mobile builds. When I um, when we got that mobile build, I said it was, a lot of it was to bring features to parity with fourteen three sixteen, which was the current build for PCs at the time. Now this is about bringing parity to to the mobile builds that we've had for a while. Um, updated pen settings pages under settings devices pen. All right, so. There's that. Um, if, if your pen has a shortcut button, choose what to do when you press it. Honestly, I don't think that should that um, setting should be there because my pen doesn't have one. And the only way that you can have that button is if it's paired through the PC through Bluetooth. So if there is no pen paired through Bluetooth, I don't see why that button should show up at all. But that's just a note, um, just a little commentary. Improved app management. We have added the ability to reset an app if it gets into a bad state under settings, apps, and features. All right, so um, what you should be able to do is you should be able to reset the settings for an app, and um, you go to advanced options, you say to reset. So that would, I guess, delete all your all the data that that app has saved in case that app's not really working well anymore. Oh, we also have a Windows Insider um, setting now, which um, is also on the latest mobile build. Um, this is the, basically the slider for which build you want to get. So that used to be under windows update. Then you would go to advanced options here, which now that's all that's there. All right. Um, switching desktops with the, with the touchpad. 
You should now be able to use four fingers to swipe across between desktops. Uh, lock screen improvements. Email addresses are now hidden on the lock screen. Media controls show up at the top of the lock screen, another thing that we got in the mobile build. Um, updated credential and UAC dialog uh, UI. That's not really such a big deal, so we can kind of move on. Like I said, there's a lot to cover in this build, and I'm just kind of going all over the place. My plan with this build is to make separate videos. There's one about the Ink workspace. This one is just kind of a general overview. Um, there's going to be a few more videos where we just kind of uh, go deeper into things. So it's really just so much to cover. Um, Skype UWP preview. Now um, there's just some updated versions of it. You can now create and send group messages. So I guess that their plan is to get this on par with the desktop Skype app because they're planning to kill the desktop app. Now, remember, Skype was originally a desktop app, and then they then it was going to be a Windows 8 modern app, and then they killed the Windows 8 modern app. They went back to the desktop app, and then they said it was going to be integrated in Windows 10 with the messaging app, um, and then they, they're killing that, and now it's going to be this, and they're killing the desktop app. But what I don't get is if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, what do you do for Skype? Um, and that, unless they're saying you're not going to be allowed to use it on Windows 10, but you can use it on Windows 7 or 8, um, I don't want to believe that it's going to be a tactic to get people to upgrade to Windows 10 because that, that would be dirty if you just said you can't use Skype on this anymore. Um, so coming when you first install this build, you'll notice that the file explorer is unpinned from the taskbar. I pinned it there to... Um, to show the new icon, but it is it will be unpinned by default. And that's because with the new start menu that we have here, we have a, a shortcut for that. Right? And also it's because taskbar space is important. You only there's only so many icons you can have here. And if you don't go into File Explorer too much, and by the way, you can unpin anything you want. So so it's not that big of a deal that they're making a little extra space for you. But if you don't want it, I guess it's two clicks less that you that you have to go through when you're setting up your computer. All right, so fixes and known issues. If you're just interested in the features, this is where you shut off the video. Don't forget to subscribe to NeoWin. Um, what's fixed for PC? We fixed the issue causing the Visual Studio emulator for Windows 10 Mobile and HoloLens a fail with an authentication error, error has occurred. The local security authority cannot be contacted. Developers should be able to use the emulator on this build. We fixed the issue causing the Xbox One controller to lag and become hard to use when connected to your PC. We fix an issue where the two-factor authentication dialog wasn't formatted correctly after an error is received. When you open a second app in tablet mode, it will appear side by side with the first app, split screen. When you close one of the apps, it should become full screen. We fix an issue where, where default column lists for task manager were too narrow on high DPI devices. We fix an issue where restarting your PC might become stuck on restarting rather than prompting, are you sure you want to restart when unsaved work is present? I actually had that issue. Good to see they fixed it. We've updated the shutdown windows dialog to use a modern icon. We fixed an issue where you, wait, shouldn't that be, is, is that a fix of the, the icon? Okay, anyway, we fixed an issue where you couldn't see the Chinese input method editor candidate list while in full screen mode for games, as well as resolved, resolved an issue where using it in the settings search box would cause settings to crash. We fixed an issue that might result in a notification that cannot be dismissed. We fix an issue resulting in overlapped icons and clip text in File Explorer when displays using a very large font size. We fix an issue causing Quicken, Quicken not to launch. However, you will need to uninstall and reinstall Quicken to get out of a bad state. All right, known issues. And this is the part where you have to pay attention if you're thinking about installing this build. After upgrading this build, there may be some cases in which when your PC enters connected standby, it may have a blue screen. For more information on how to mitigate this issue, if it happens to you, see the forum posts. Um, so go to blogs.windows.com to find that forum post. Uh, we are continuing to make changes to our uh, extension, data store, schema, and Microsoft Edge. As a result, after upgrading this build, any extensions installed in Microsoft Edge will be removed. You can reinstall these extensions to get them back. Feedback Hub is not localized, and the UI will be in English US only, even with language packs installed. Feedback Hub takes about 20 to 30 minutes after updating to this build to download and hydrate itself. It has to hydrate itself, just saying. Um, Feedback Hub is not fully, fully hydrated. If you receive a mini survey notification, it will take you nowhere in the app. Search in Feedback Hub won't show results, and if you click to go to the Feedback Hub from another app or setting, Feedback will not open. The Desktop App Converter Preview will fail to run on Windows 10 Insider Preview Build 14.328. Um, 
they suggest you skip this build. All Tencent online games no longer work in current builds from the development brands. Um, by the way, all Tencent online games just no longer work in current builds. It didn't say it's a known issue that they're planning to fix. They just said it doesn't work anymore. I don't know why that is. Um, I don't know if it's not going to work in the release, but that was an interesting phrase that they put. Th the updated UAC UI mentioned above breaks the Alt-Y keyboard shortcut to choose yes. All right. If you're in an app and click on a link with a URL longer than 260 characters, it will bring up the open with dialog instead of opening with your default browser. We are aware of situations in which Groove Music will crash on launch at the splash screen and working to get a fix out soon. As a workaround, you can use Groove Music online. Playing music in the, gro in the Groove Music within two minutes after logging in your PC will result in playback errors. If you wait more than two minutes after logging in to play music in Groove Music, you will avoid this issue. In Microsoft Edge, some large downloads may appear to get stuck in 99% completion. You can work around this issue by renaming the file in your downloads after closing Microsoft Edge. This workaround skips security checks on the file, so it should be used only with files from a trusted source. If you have BitLocker device encryption enabled and try to go back to previous Insider Preview build via go back to an earlier build, under Settings, Update and Security Recovery, the app will crash and you will be unable to roll back. To work around this issue, disable BitLocker de uh, device encryption and try again. Settings will crash if you try to pin one of the pages to start, resulting in page not being pinned. You may see square boxes in certain apps when using some of the new emoji. We're still getting things set up. This will be resolved in a future build. If you upgraded from 14.3.16, you may see stuck apps in the store. Those apps will also be duplicated in Start's All Apps list. One real, one pending. To resolve this, start downloading some other app, pause the download, then go to the Downloads and Update view, click the Resume All button. Once everything is downloaded, the issue should be resolved. All right, um, coming soon, Windows 10 Anniversary Update Bug Bash. Um, we like to dedicate certain days and have everyone in the team spend the time focused on finding new unreported issues. We call this a bug bash. Uh, we are kicking off a bug bash inside the Windows and Devices group next week, and we'd like to invite you to join us because, hey, we're insiders, and it's our job to report bugs. We're basically the beta testers. All right. Um, anyway, lots of known issues, lots of fixes. We're still a few months, probably about three months away from the final release of uh, the anniversary update. So expect these. If you're on the fast ring, I know people are going to ask me, should I install it? If you got to ask, the answer is no. It's very buggy, um, as it should be. And even if the bugs don't affect you, the next build's bugs might. So beware. Know what you're getting into if you download it. Anyway, guys, I'm Rich from Neowin. Have a great night.